Hi, this is lesson 4.1, reverse chain rule, which we call U substitution. This is from Taylor and Shaw, Extended Calculus. Here's a few warm-up examples that I want you to try to take a look at, and I would like you to try 1, 2, 3, 4 before you even watch this video. So please pause, try them, and then come back and we'll talk about them. So the first one, we're taking the derivative. I hope you realize that. Bring the 4 out in front, and we're going to... Leave the inside alone, raise it to the one less power for the three, and then the blue there is the chain, the derivative of the inside. Similarly for number two, we also have a chain, which would be of the five. And so we have to account for this five if we are going in reverse and doing an antiderivative. So that's what example three and four bring about. So I'll do that with you. So if I do number three, I have to raise this inside portion one higher power, and I'm going to divide by that same portion. Now, with the inside, to account for this five when we took the derivative, I'm going to have to divide by five here in order to deal with that, but I already have the five here. So this was the five chain, which I have up here. Those are equivalent. So that kind of goes away. And so I'm going to end up with just this integral right here, the antiderivative. 1 plus 5x, all raised to the fourth, all over 4, plus my c value. On number 4, we have a similar situation. We have this 5 here, which is the same as this 5 off the chain. And so when I go in reverse here, I know that the antiderivative of sine, uh, cosine is the sine. I'm going to leave that inside alone, but I do need to account for this chain. Why, well, if I did take the derivative of this, I would have to multiply by 5. Well, that is that 5 right there that is accounted for. So this is all I'm going to get for my antiderivative. Now, there is a more formal process that we'll look at here in a second, but I just want you to get an idea of we, we have to account for this chain rule when we're doing the antiderivative in reverse. So we hooked on the derivative of the inside function example 1 and 2, so you had to unhook the derivative on 3 and 4. Each of these integration rules from the last lesson can now be generalized, generalized as a reverse chain rule integral. The other way that we do say this is u substitution. Now it doesn't have to be u, but u is the variable of choice most often. So if we look at our rules from before, we have all of these in x form. Now we're going to put them in u form. And when we do them in u form, you have to include to have the chain there to work backwards from. And we'll show you some examples and we'll see how this works. It might be a little confusing right now, but it's okay. The other way to say this too is that the u is equal to a chunk, a full chunk of a function or whatever, an inside deal that we are looking at. And so we let u equal to the chunk and then we got to so sort out du as well. So let's look at example number five. Here is my integral and this kind of looks like u to the tenth du. That's what this looks like and so my chunk is going to be the 3x minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to let u equal 3x minus 1. And then my du is equal to 3 times dx. Now what I'm really doing here is I'm letting u equal something and then I need to find du dx. So this was du dx. However, without this dx here, However, I want to cross that off and I want to multiply it over onto the other side. So these differentials we can rewrite and use them in a little bit of different form which help us quite a bit. Now we need all these pieces in order to take this antiderivative. I need a 3 in here. I don't have a 3. And I need my dx too. Well there it is right there. That is now I can't just throw a 3 in there with nothing else, I, but I can balance a constant. You can only balance constants. 
So I need to put a one third out in front. One third of three is going to be one. So I'm okay with this. So now this is going to be equal to, and I substitute every single piece that I do have. So this would be u to the 10th du. du does equal both pieces 3dx. So I substitute that out. And then I still have the integral symbol there. So now I go 1 third u to the 11th over 11. So I took the antiderivative of u to the 10th plus c. Now this is in terms of u. I gave you a problem in terms of x here. So I want this back in x. So we back substitute, put the x back in. So this would be 3x minus 1 raised to the 11th over 11 plus c. And I should put this 3 and this 11 together for 33 down below, but I'm leaving it there for effect right now. And there it is. Let's try number 6 now. With number 6, do you see a function and its derivative? Well, I do see this chunk right here, and this kind of looks like the derivative of each one of these respective pieces. So I'm going to try to let u equal t cubed plus t squared. Now if I take the derivative du dt, that's going to be 3t squared plus 2t. And I don't want the dt here, I want it over here, so I'm going to move it. So this right here is equivalent to this piece with the dt. Now I can do my substitution. So my above integral is going to equal, I didn't have to balance any constants either, which is nice, but this is just going to be u du. Find the antiderivative, so this would be u squared over 2 plus c, then bring it back, bring it back to my t, so this would be t cubed, this is my chunk, that whole thing squared over 2 plus c. So that's the answer for that one. Now some of you might be able to look at number 6 here and then just look at this and piece it together a little bit easier in your brain. I like to do you a substitution in proper form like this, but you know if you can see it on your own, great. Okay. So how about number 7? Do you see a function and its derivative? Well, I'll be hard pressed to do that a little bit, but I do see an x cubed and an x squared. And I know if I take the derivative of x cubed, I get out an x squared. So let's try this and let's try to let u equal this. But also, I'm going to put the 5 in there because I know if I take the derivative of 5, I'm going to end up with 0. So when I do this, du, I'm not going to write the dx anymore. I'm just going to put it over on the right hand side. This is going to be 12 x squared dx. So I have this piece and this piece that I need to substitute. I look up here, I don't see 12. But if I m modify this by saying, oh, 2 times 6 is 12, and I can't just throw in a 2 without balancing it, and that's what I call this, this is a balance. So I balance that constant, and what I'm going to end up with is 1 half now let me see if I can rewrite this. This would be the top is my du. Well, oh, that was easy. So that whole top and the dx go away into my du, and then on the bottom I'm going to be left with 1 over the square root of that chunk, which is my u. Wow, did that just make this whole problem a lot easier? Now go find the antiderivative and back substitute in. So now you can go ahead and check your answer. I hope you paused and tried that. Up here, I get this 2 out in front because I divided by 1 half when I took the antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half. So it's u to the 1 half divided by 1 half, which gives me that 2 right there. Those two ca twos cancel. So I'm left with this answer. Now if you're hesitant, a great thing to do is go ahead and check your answer. If I take the derivative of my answer, I should get back to my integrand. And sure enough, I bring the 1 half out in front, which is here, raise it to the 1 half power, or 1 less power, and then multiply by the chain, which is 12x squared. Well, 1 half 
of 12 is going to be my 6x squared, which becomes my original integrand, which I had up on top. Beautiful. Love this stuff. Number eight is a great problem because it might confuse you a little bit. If you let u equal my chunk, y cubed plus 1, I need a du, which would be 3y squared dy. I don't see this any place. I can't do this method. I can't do u substitution if I don't have the du. So we need to find a different method. What you would do with this one then is go ahead and expand and do it piece by piece. I'm just going to do that one quick for you. Pause this, you try it, and see how it goes. There, great, I'm glad you paused. You better have. There's your answer, so that's just a quick expansion because I can't do u substitution on this one because I don't have a du. Let's roll into number nine. Now, if, one way to look at this, too, is that, and I know I'm not taking the derivative, but I always think that if I, when I look at this integrand, if I did take the derivative of that, would I have to chain? And if the answer is yes, then you probably have to do a u substitution. So if I took the derivative of sine of 4x, yeah, I would have to chain it off. So then I would have to do a u substitution here. So let's try this. u is going to be my inside chunk. So I have u is equal to 4x du is equal to 4 dx. I don't have this 4, so i got to sneak it in here. Can't just sneak in a constant without balancing, so i got to put a 1 fourth out in front. So now I end up with 1 fourth, the integral of sine of u du. Because both of those go into that. Antiderivative is negative one-fourth cosine u plus c, and then you put the x back, so it's cosine of 4x. There's your answer. Number 10, can you see what to do here? Make sure you pause this and try some of these. I'm going to let u equal my inside function theta squared, because I know that if I take the derivative of theta squared, I'm going to get 2 theta d theta. Now my balancing is a little bit trickier, but I do need a 2 in here. So you can either pull out the 3 out in front and then put the 2 in and then divide by 2, or else you can just turn this 3 magically into a 2 by multiplying by a constant. So I took the 3 out. You can do that with a constant multiple. That's it, not with a variable. And then I put in my 2, which I like there, and then I balanced it with that 1 half. This is one way to do it, but just make sure that when I multiply 3 halves by 2, I'm going to get back to what I started with, and sure enough, I do. So that should work for me. So if I do this substitution, I get 3 halves integral of this 2 theta. d theta is my du, so that's going to be my du, and I'm going to have cosine of u. So the antiderivative of the... Cosine is just going to be the sine. I put the theta squared back in. I skipped a step there. I hope you're okay with that. And then the three halves just went along for the ride. All right, now number 11. The big thing with number 11 is do you see a function and its derivative? And the answer is, I hope, yes. If I take the derivative of the sine, I am going to get the cosine. Even if I take the derivative of the cosine, I'm going to get the sine. But I think when we talk about an inside function, I think it looks a lot better if I rewrite it like this. So now my chunk appears like it would probably be better if it was the sine, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to let u equal to the sine of x, and du is equal to cosine of x. So right there, is my cosine dx. That's my du substitution. My u substitution is going to be this chunk inside. So overall, I'm going to be left with u squared du. Well, I can do that easy. u cubed over 3 plus c. Pop back in my u, so this would be sine cubed x over 3 plus c. Nice. That is what we end up with. 
take the derivative of that if you don't understand it. And I think that sometimes you do have to take the derivative to see how these chains come about. So practice that on your own and it should be better for you. So now u substitution. This is a better way to write out what we're doing when we do u substitution. So here's all the steps that we have been trying as we've gone along. And so uh, I like to just do the u substitution in a more formal way. This book is asking you to maybe visualize these things a little bit more and possibly do it that way. But uh, I just like doing u substitution and seeing what u is and seeing what du is. Now there is one little trick sometimes. You have to finagle the u a little bit sometimes and we'll see how that comes about in these examples that we're going to be doing here in a second. So now I don't exactly see a function and its derivative for this number 12. And so if we do a u substitution, uh, you, you can't take this x and plug it in, uh, I'm sorry, distribute it through. But if I do let u equal the inside function as we said above, then du is equal to dx. Now this doesn't happen too often, but this is going to happen in this case. If I rewrite this now, this is going to be the square root of u du. However, what happens to this x? Well, what we're going to do is use this u substitution to rewrite x. So I solve for x in this, and this is going to be u plus 1. So out in front here, I'm going to get u plus 1 for this x. And I got to put parentheses around it. Now I can rewrite u plus 1, u to the 1 half, du, and I can distribute this. So this would be u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half, then the integral du. Now I've rewritten it, and this is a very easy antiderivative to try to solve out. So you just raise to the one higher power, you're dividing by 5 halves, which means you multiply by 2 thirds, very similar for this term here, and then you have your answer. So one additional step in here would be to write x in terms of u, just so you can substitute this thing out in front of the of the radical. So at 13, we're going to let u equal 2x plus 3 for no good reason. <laughs> we don't see a function as derivative, but we're going to try this and see what happens anyway. So du is equal to 2dx. Now, I don't necessarily see these things, but I do see a 2x here. So maybe if I take this, 2x is equal to u minus 3. So I rewrite 2x in u minus 3. Put that in here, maybe this might work. So let's try. Denominator, square root of u, that part was easy. du, du I need a 2. So I'm going to put that in and I'm going to put a 1 half out in front. And then the, so this 2 goes along with this dx. Now I'm going to take this 2x from over here and put it into here. So I'm going to get u minus 3 minus 1. Now I think we can work with this. I rewrite like that and I'm going to get my little rabbit method here. So I'm going to get 1 half the integral and I'm going to do it by pieces now. This is going to be u to the 1 half. u over u to the 1 half would just be u to the 1 half. And then this would be 4 u to the negative one-half, du, cover this one up. Now you can take the antiderivative of each one of those pieces. Now remember that this one-half applies to both of these terms. So when this is all finally said and done, I'm going to get one-third. My chunk is 2x plus 3 raised to the three-halves then minus 4, because the 1 half, this 2 cancels with this 2, and so this would be my chunk, 2x plus 3, raised to the 1 half, plus my c. There we go. That's what we end up with. Woo! Fun stuff, huh? Okay, this sometimes will get a little bit crummy. 
we won't see too many of these examples. I'll throw a couple at your way, but um, I think it's nice to challenge you a little bit. But you, these aren't too typical, but they may happen. Thanks for watching this. Have a great day.